What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and we have an interesting update in the uh, Tim Pool uh, situation, including uh, he seems pretty sure about who did it, why they did it, and also a claim that they are closing in on the person responsible based on uh, some other interesting factors and exactly who lives around him, not necessarily who he is, but who lives around him. I want to, again, point out, maybe not everyone agrees with me, but, um, you know, this type of behavior should absolutely be jail time, prison time. It, it breaks multiple uh, federal rules, in particular, even more if you're doing this from out of state. Um, it's not a joke. I talked about it in yesterday's video. I gave you uh, three, two or three examples of people who lost their lives because of this stuff. Um, as a content creator, obviously, I'm extremely sensitive to it because it's something I've had to deal with multiple times in the past. People didn't like a particular video I made or a tweet I made, and they try to get me ended. Um, and, and, and that's exactly what I believe it is. Um, you may disagree and say it's just a meme or a prank, um, and we'll have to agree to disagree on that. When you send uh, these officers in, you put them on ultra high alert by making up this super dangerous situation. You know they're going in there with hair triggers. And uh, I believe that even if the intent is not to have somebody lose their life, we know enough that you're putting somebody in, knowingly putting somebody in an ultra high risk situation. You're taking away resources from other people that may need life-saving resources at that time. Uh, it is a massive, massive thing that the penalty must be extremely strict and it must be extremely public. Every single moron that does this needs to uh, face the maximum penalty. It needs to be covered by every major news media outlet and every major YouTuber as to discourage this idiocy. Whatever happened to sending a pizza to somebody's house? Uh, you know, these are, you know, as long as you pay for it. Don't don't uh, hose the delivery driver. But, um, you know, the, now mainstream media is starting to cover it. You see, you know, Was the Washington Examiner po po posting. Podcaster Tim Pool uh, had to deal with this during a live stream. His office was raided by officers while on air Thursday in what turned out to be uh, one of these incidents. Officers raided his home during a live taping of his podcast after an anonymous source reported that people were, uh, the, th something terrible had happened. Several officers responded. We now know that it was maybe a dozen outside and several more circling the block. Um, you're talking about multiple police departments being tied up for, I don't know, an hour or two. Um, there's also an interesting twist in this uh, that Tim is talking by the way, good response time. They got called at 8.20. They arrived at 8.27. I've been to Tim's house. I don't think local law enforcement is very close to it. So uh, pretty good. You see security cam footage and all sorts of other stuff. Here's another interesting thing that uh, Tim, you know, I get it. I get where Tim's coming from here. To me, I don't like to implicate officers in a negative light. Um but he's right here. So the extenuating circumstance that allowed them to enter his house without a search warrant um, was based on, you know, the fact that there was this emergency exigent circumstances, I think is what it was called, that there was this emergency that they absolutely had to breach. Now, Tim Pool posts the actual phone call. And the officers knew or strongly suspected that it was a hoax and they still entered the house. So if they knew that it was a hoax or strongly suspected it, that seems unlikely to qualify as exigent circumstances. I hope I'm using that word right. Um, but you see here. You know, in the full dispatch, the local PD are confused. Three people greet them outside saying it's false. They can't come in. And the officers even say they think it's a hoax. Now, this is a tough spot, right? Because, to, like, 
even if there's like a one percent chance that or a tenth of a percent chance that something really bad happened in somebody's house, it's like they have to check, right? I mean, like they can't just leave and then find out later that oh my god, this horrible thing happened, and we let some dude who was standing outside just say, man, nothing's going on in there. So I definitely understand the law enforcement angle to this and why they feel like, hey, look, we've got to search the house. I've had it happen to me multiple times. Although, uh, in every time with me, uh, I was able to handle it uh, through a intercom and and phone call, uh, and they didn't have to enter my house. I live in a smaller town. Um, most of the officers actually know me. Uh, so it's, it's a little different than where, uh, you know, Tim talks about his video. He, you know, lives just outside of DC, a little ways out of DC, but close enough. And many of his neighbors are, you know, potentially high profile, uh, DC, you know, muckety mucks, so to speak. And he said in his video also that the officers ended up going to multiple neighbors houses and that those neighbors were angry. And it, he alluded to that, hey, basically some of these neighbors are like DC lawyers or DC or politicians or politicians aides, and that they were so mad about it that they have joined the search or essentially, you know, lent their clout to having a more full scale investigation, which by the way, I a hundred percent, hundred percent approve of. You talked about last night too, um, about essentially how, you know, this is how these situations go. This is how these situations go. So Ian, uh, a guy from the show was just about to, uh, have to go to the bathroom. And I've been on the show, I think twice, I think twice, once or twice. And, you know, I've had to take a bathroom break too. Essentially what you do, the bathroom is like downstairs and around the corner. So basically you wait for your moment and then you hit like a dead sprint to the bathroom. You go, you wash your hands, you wash your hands. Then you like race back upstairs. That's what everyone does. Okay. Cause the show is live. Well, there's like a 10 minute window that it was actually very close that like those officers could have been walking up the stairs at the very same time Ian was rushing to the bathroom. Who knows what could have happened? I mean, legitimately, um, very, very, very scary possibilities. Um, and you know, Ian's a very nice guy. I've always gotten along with him. Um, and that would have been obviously awful. Um, also. Now we have the reason. By the way, if you made it this far in the video, um, it's January, February, March. They suck for YouTubers. Um, this isn't just about me, but everybody. There's a join button below the video you're watching if you're watching on YouTube. It's just like subscribing on Twitch. It tosses a few bucks to your Witcher, uh, a few bucks to your co favorite content creator. If you're in the position to... Please do consider joining today and just do it for like a month or two. And then once summer kicks around and everything, you know, is back, you know, dip, that's totally fine. And if not for me, maybe for one of your favorite smaller creators, uh, it goes miles more than any ad revenue ever would. Uh, so Tim last night uh, talked about, you know, what he believes to be the case. So the night before this incident, he hosted controversial politician and recently deplatformed politician Marjorie Taylor Greene. And what he told us uh, yesterday was actually she had been facing um, loads of unhinged threats from people in the days immediately following being on his show. So it was his best guess that this was actually related to Marjorie Taylor Greene, because people, you know, the video was um, released that next day. It became very popular. News media was whinging and complaining about it. And then the very next night was when the situation happened. Now, they didn't do it while Marjorie Taylor Greene was on, but she also has security. And I'm sure like, you know, local officers probably knew and maybe somebody called the night before. Uh, it's difficult to know exactly, but he, he seems to uh, think that this was politically motivated 
I would I see no reason to disagree with him at this point uh, because, quite frankly, he's never had this problem before. And now obviously, he mentions in his video trolling, but what he's really talking about is the uh, the Jack Murphy debacle. But I again, I don't think that that's I don't think it's related to that in any way, shape, or form. Um, I think he has his supporters and the people that are uh, memeing on him now don't blame Tim. At least I don't think they do. Um, but I really look forward to them finding out. They've been able to find out several times in the past. So I suspect if some of these high profile DC people are as angry as he says, uh, he's probably right. They probably will get to the bottom of it. And I 110% support that. I'm glad that Tim, Lydia, Luke, and Ian are all safe and everyone else. There's about a 55 people that live in that house, I think, nowadays. So, you know, I'm happy that they're all safe. I'm happy that Tim is uh, attacking this with the ferocity, the appropriate amount of venom. I hope that they find the person. Let's be honest. I'm sure it's a guy. Um, only guys take this stupid of risks. Um, hopefully they find the person uh, and we get an update to the story because, wow, what a crazy week this has been. And it's only the first week of 2022. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, if you get a chance, please do consider joining the channel. And if you haven't yet, if this, there's a red subscribe button down below here, please do consider clicking that. I greatly, greatly appreciate your support. And we'll talk to you again real soon.